Hey everybody, welcome to Strength Coach TV. I'm Anthony Rana. This is the show where we take you inside some of the country's best fitness facilities, give you a tour, and then we sit down with the owner and we talk a little bit of shop. Shout out to Marigold Foods, marigoldbars.com. Uh, couldn't do this without them. They are allowing me, by sponsoring, they're allowing me to go to more and more gyms, bring this information out there to you guys. I can't tell you how many people have said, Anthony, thank you so much for doing this because I watched all of the Strength Coach TVs before I opened my gym. And so we wanna keep doing that, and uh, I couldn't do it without Marigold Bars. Um, plus, I eat the bars every single day, non-GMO, no soy, gluten-free, uh, no preservatives, and low sugar. Tastes great, I love them every day I have one. Marigoldbars.com. All right, today, continue my tour through New England. Uh, I'm heading to Gloucester, Mass, to go visit with Kevin Larrabee at Allied Strength. Now, this is an interesting story. Kevin was working at Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning, part of, uh, owner of the uh, Certified Functional Strength Coach Certification, uh, Body by Boyle Online, and he decided that he wanted to open up his own place. So, uh, Kevin shows you what you can do. You can do big things in a small space, a thousand square feet in a warehouse kind of uh, facility. Uh, on a street, like kind of a dead end street as well. So it's definitely a destination location. He also took a huge chance. He wasn't training in Glister. He was l training in Woburn, Mass. And so he wasn't like he was a trainer there and he just went and went on his own. So he had to make this really, this is talk about organically uh, and build it up from zero. Uh, Kevin had to do this and you could do this uh, without spending a ton of money, without having a huge place. So uh, Kevin's a really smart guy. He's made a huge impact in this industry and now he's making a huge impact in his community in Glister. So uh, let's head up to Glister and Allied Strength, Kevin Larrabee. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to Gloucester, Massachusetts. We're here with Kevin Larrabee at Allied Strength. Kev, thanks for doing this. Yeah, great to see you. All right. Um, Okay, we are in, let's just go over. This is a yeah. beach town. Be yeah. We're here on this beautiful day too. Yeah. This is, you said it's on the border of Manchester and, and Gloucester. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the demographics of where we are. Yeah, so uh, really we're kind of on the, the, the border of Manchester by the sea. I mean, they like to mention that yeah. they're by the, the ocean and all yeah. that stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, a, a lot of folks that live around here, they live here because of the beach. Um, you know, it's also, really different demographics between uh, Manchester and, and Rockport and, and Gloucester, but it's a really great mix because uh, there are also some not just fantastic uh, you know, athletes around here because there's really big high schools, yep. um, but also it's just a really fitness oriented area because people are outside a lot, they're doing, they're going yeah. to the beach, you know, they yeah. wanna get ready to get back in shape to, for beach season and stuff like that, but also there's just really great reserves to hike around here too. Yep. Um, we are not close to Boston, we're kind of in the, the suburbs, but um, that's why I, I grew up in this area, I love this area, and yeah. it's uh, something you appreciate more and more as you get older versus being a, a kid and being farther away from the city. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there is some kind of, being that it's a beach town, there's yeah. going to be some people who are just here for a couple months totally. or just here for the weekend, totally. right? Cool. We'll talk about that actually when we sit down for the business talk, because I want to I want to see how you're dealing with that. And, absolutely. And, and so, um, no, it's just you here, right? You don't yeah. have any employees, right? No, it's just, okay. it's just me. Cool. And how many square foot? Uh, we are 990 square feet in here. Okay, cool. If we, I mean, this thing is high. Yes. So, <laughs> we'll show, we'll show that, but, um, so uh, who's coming in here and like, who's the demographic for you right now? Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's really interesting. When I, when I opened up the gym, I, I basically wanted to make sure that I created a space that was just inviting to everyone. Uh, because as we know, like you, you step into a health club today, it can be incredibly intimidating. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times you walk in there, you see all this equipment and you might get like, you know, that trial session of with a personal trainer or something yeah. like that, that might show you around. But then uh, at the end of the day, like you don't really have a lot of direction. So uh, I wanted to put together a gym that when you walk through the door, uh, just from even the initial interactions and all the people that train here, you kind of feel like you belong. You feel like it's a little bit different than the atmosphere that you saw at uh, a bigger health club and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So 
the kind of base of the business was adult group training. That's what we were starting off with. Um, because again, I feel like there are so many people that uh, we're, we're, we're trying to help. Like we see um, you know, folks out there that are, are trying to get in better shape. They're always trying the latest you know, diet or, or workout, whatever it might be. But I wanted to put together a facility that gave them every opportunity to succeed. You know, gave them all the tools that they need, all the help them build all the school, uh, skills that they need, and then put that together with a program and an environment that's incredibly encouraging. So, you know, they're like, oh, I can't wait to get back to Allied Strength. Yeah. Oh man, like it's yeah. just, and like they're going to tell their friends and you know all that stuff that we want to do as fitness yeah. professionals to help others. Absolutely. So you're doing semi-private and yeah. you're doing personal training. Do you ever yeah. have any classes in here? Like just yeah, actually, group classes? Yeah, actually, I'm sorry. I, I you know, explained that a little bit better. I, I, that was my fault. Uh, basically, we do uh, adult group training as kind of a membership. So you can sign up for either twice per week or three times per week. Okay. And we have classes at 6 p.m. Uh, during the summer. In the other seasons, we actually also have a 6 a.m. adult group as well. So you can train in the morning or in the evening, kind of the before school and the after work okay. type set up yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I also do uh, personal training which you know we scale based on how many people are in that group and for one example I, I train a mom and her three kids so we kind of scale and make their own group for them yeah. uh, and then I also do uh, sports performance training which is really the same setup the only difference is is kind of like at MBSC you know folks would pay up front for the season so they pay for you know 10 or 11 weeks of training up front where with the adults they're paying either $99 or $139 every other week so it comes out to about $25 per session for an adult group okay. training session which is about 50 minutes to 60 minutes versus about $30 a session for the athletes, which is uh, about 80 minutes long. Yeah, so that's interesting. So you're, you're char are you charging them every two weeks? Yeah, they get rebuilled EFT every two weeks. The EFT, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Very cool. That's yeah. interesting. That why did you come up with that? Let's just before uh, we sit. I, I mean, because basically, I, I think from all the folks that I talked to, like you know, whether it be uh, folks like Alan Cosgrove, you know, working with the guys at Mark Fisher Fitness, yep. um, you know, they have basically said like that's the the best way to make sure you're having a constant revenue stream into the gym um, and also it's just really simple not just for the folks that come in here but also me like i don't have like a, i'll use mbse as an example like i don't have a an awesome person like a bob hansen or a diane at the front office that yeah. can run credit cards and stuff yeah. i basically you know when people walk through the door i'm coaching them maybe at the end i'm running their card for some protein powder or something like that yeah, or, or yeah. maybe for a t-shirt um, but it is the uh, lowest amount of friction to have because I don't want to have to spend time on that stuff. I just want to basically say, all right, Anthony, you want to train twice per week? Yeah. All right, great. You're going to get charged $99 every two weeks, yep. and it's a 12-week commitment. Yep. That way, not only can you make a commitment towards your goals, because it's going to take more than two weeks to get there, mm -hmm. but also so you know, we can make a commitment to you to help you get to where you want to go. Um, and I, I like that 12-week number better than anything because also, it's not like a cell phone contract where you're locked in for like two years. Like some yeah. gyms will lock you in for like two years of training and then people stop showing up and it's just like I'm wasting money and then yeah. it sours them on that whole experience yeah. where I almost want to say like, yeah, you're going to sign up for 12 weeks and then you can cancel after that. But trust me, once you're here for 12 weeks, I'm going to make sure you're getting your, to your goals and also you're going to love this experience so much. You're never going to want to yeah. you know, quit. Like make, cool. make me kind of earn your business going forward. Yeah. Also, it kind of sounds cheaper, not cheaper, like less expensive. At exactly. Yeah. $99 every two weeks. It's a, it's a nice low number, especially yeah. for this area. Like, yeah. you know, $99 is a lot. Like I have some people that will drop like literally $300 a week on personal training, $360 a week yeah. on personal training. Yeah. And you know, then when I say, yeah, it's only $25 a session if you want to get in the door. And then I also let everyone come in here, of course, like any other gym. I want everyone to try out a class before they sign up. No, people can't sign up online. They have okay. to sign up in here yep. because I never want folks to sign up online thinking they're getting something else. I want them to come in here, yeah. experience like it that. themselves mm -hmm. and then say, all right, well, what'd you think? Like, is this something you want to sign up for, 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 for 12 weeks? Like, and like, do you like the environment? Did you like the people you were working with? Yeah. How'd you like the atmosphere? Because, um, you know, again, at, at the end of the day, I think we're, a lot of the people that walk through our door right now, this isn't the first place they've been to. They probably signed up 
to multiple other gyms. They probably bought like a fitness program online or yeah. maybe like, you know, the VHSs back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they haven't seen success. So I feel like, you know, I want them to come in and see something that's not only a little bit different, but kind of shows them, yeah, maybe this is a thing almost to reinvigorate the hope that they had from those previous things that they tried because, you know, this could be the fifth, sixth or seventh stop yeah. that they've made. I want so to make true. sure that they're, again, confident that they're going to get to where they want to go. Very cool. Full transparency. All yeah. right. Well, let's get, uh, let's go. We'll get a tour. Awesome. Get a little look at and uh, talk about some of the equipment decisions that you made. Absolutely. Let's do All it. Right. So we're here at 27 Connellan Road in Gloucester and we're at the end of an industrial complex street. So lots of the stuff that's around here are industrial properties. We got recycling place across the street. We got a couple folks also in this building that are working on cars, stuff like that. But like these are great spaces for gyms because they're just wide open blank spaces yeah. and you can really do whatever you want to them. So uh, that's why I picked this spot and it's actually rather quiet outside of the folks doing some stuff across yeah. the street right now. Total destination too, right? Because this is a dead end street with a bunch of uh, exactly. you know, like industrial industrial road. Yeah, All it's right. very much like Mike Bull's Train of the Edition where like unless you know where you're going, you're never going to drive by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's head in. So we have uh, just again, about a thousand square feet here and we're trying to maximize it as best we can. So as you kind of look around as much as possible, everything is against the wall. So we have wide open spaces and we have space that we can uh, utilize for really whatever we need to, whether it be speed work, general warm up stuff on the turf or on the rubber where we're doing, you know, heavier lifting type stuff with a trap bar deadlift or Olympic lifting, things with dumbbells. Um, but it's a great setup because uh, we were talking before we started recording, but I like to think of this almost like a, like a transformer because every time we do something new, a different part of the workout, we're actually, you know, wiping the board clean, resetting everything, resetting the table, and then going through whatever we need to do, uh, need to next, whether it be formal stretch, activation, dynamic warm up, plyos and med ball, and then of course our strength training and then uh, conditioning at the end. Yeah. So Kev, I'm looking around, I see four bikes, three sleds, four slide boards. Yeah. And you know, I can although we have two squat racks, we do, yeah. you had the you got the connector yep. to kind of have three uh pull stations with exactly. either TRX, right? Mm -hmm. Was that is that how you design your classes as well? Yeah, so basically uh, the the gym is set up to work with groups of nine. I actually capped the groups at eight just in case we have folks that need to make a, a makeup class. Um, but I set everything up and I purchased the equipment to make sure I had three of everything. So uh, the way that it's actually split up is we'll have one section here, which is kind of the racks where you see the TRXs. So, you know, we can do anything from, you know, TRX row progressions, chin ups, we're doing push ups on the racks, we're doing trap bar deadlifts, we might be doing rear fit elevated split squats, all, all here doing split squats as well. Um, and then we have the turf, which I cut into two. So we have one section that is all the way down with the kettlebell. So we'll be doing kettlebell exercises down there, which could be something as simple as a kettlebell loaded split squat. We're doing single leg deadlifts. We're doing carries up and down the turf. And then we have the other section of the turf, which like usually we're using for core exercises, whether it be uh, plank progressions, we could be doing kettlebell chop and lifts. Uh, we're using things like valve slides for uh, valve slide leg curls and reverse lunges. And we have the dumbbell rack right there, so we can always grab dumbbells, bring them onto the turf, yeah. and use them for the exercises on there. So people rotate in a clockwise fashion. So they'll do something on the rubber, then they go to this part of the turf, then that part of the turf, then they find themselves back on the rubber and will rotate through three exercises, through you know tri sets, uh, for for the workout we'll do two tri sets, and that way we get to do three or excuse me six movements throughout the strength training portion of the workout. Very cool. What's going on here is the, <laughs> okay, the achievements. Okay. Yes, yes. So we have. Uh, I mean, this is something that is relatively new. We're still filling things out, but it's kind of cool just to not just track the achievements of the people in the gym, but also to have some friendly competition. Um, and I think that's always fun. It's like, oh, we got a new name up on the board, or uh, uh, yeah. this is kind of the big thing right now. This is like where the main focus is, is on the board on the three mile air assault times uh, for our adults and our athletes and personal training clients, because you know sometimes you know someone will walk in and be like, 
oh man, I can't believe they got that time. Like I get to beat that time. And that's kind of, it's just really good because it kind of gives people something to, to push for. It allows them to almost have uh, a glimpse of the future as well, because you might do something like a, you know, a body weight chin up, be like, nailed that body weight chin up. I got that. Now, next goal is five body weight chin ups or for the adults is three body weight chin ups. Um, and I think it's just cool. Like when people are able to do things that they never thought they were possible, like they thought they were capable of doing, like Really, like body weight push ups are probably the thing that I love the most. Once we have people doing eight body weight push ups and even one body weight push up to the ground, especially with adults, uh, I think it's just incredibly empowering because they just, it's just great to see that progression from doing push ups on the rack, going down, 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 making that angle greater, and then going down to the ground and doing push ups. It's, yeah. uh, it's just awesome. It should be celebrated. Like, you should be celebrating the achievements of the people uh, that the people that are training at your gym are making. Absolutely. Kev, how long have you been here? We forgot to, I forgot to ask you that. Yeah, so I've been in this space uh, since the end of the year. Literally, uh, the day before Thanksgiving was the day that Perform Better dropped everything off. Okay. So that, and the day before that is when they came in and put down all the flooring. Okay. So we literally, like, back to back days, everything got dropped off, installed, and then we had to complete the, the office. The office wasn't done yet, so we were still doing construction in here. Oh, so that wasn't, this was, you didn't get this like that. Right, yeah, so this, this space came with just the bathroom. And then we basically just built off the bathroom uh, an office because you know, at, at the end of the day, uh, maybe in hindsight, I would have made the office a little bit smaller, but it's just great for initial consultations. It's great for doing nutrition coaching, like through PN and stuff like that. And also, it's just really good for when you have, especially a parent come in with their, their son or daughter the first time, just to have them sit down in the office and just have like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, talk about their goals um, for both athletes and for adults and just like have a more one-on-one -on -one quiet experience versus just like, all right, well, let's go sit out on the floor uh, and stuff like that. And it's used for, for, for storage and as kind of like a storefront as well. Absolutely. So what are, what are those? You know what? We'll talk about that when we sit down for business yeah. with the uh, additional revenue stream. So okay. with that, Kev, did the landlord help you out with any of that? Like a lot of times people say, okay, I want to do right. something. Was, it, was there anything? Because you are, you are building out his building here. Yeah, no, I, I definitely went through that process and said, hey, you know, I, I basically, the office cost me $3,000 to build. Okay. So I, I, I said, you know, you know, maybe you can give me a break on rent because the next person that comes into this space, you know, that's going to add some value. Uh, and he basically told me, no, because they're probably going to want it torn down and I basically rolled my eyes and said, all right, well, you know, it's going to be really great if I ever move out of this space. I'm going to get all the members in here. We're going to get some protective goggles, some gloves, and some sledgehammers, and I'm going to beat the crap out of that office yeah, and destroy yeah. it and give them the space back just like it was because um, it was something I needed to build either way. Yeah. And uh, I think it adds value to the space, but unfortunately, my landlord doesn't see it the same, which is understandable. It's his space, and someone might not want it or might not see the value in it, but um, it'll be fun to do that or to cut it out the best we can and take it to the next space I go to. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, you're, uh, I see you're using that as some storage. Yeah, yes. You use whatever you can. Right, so if you come around here, uh, that was actually another option that we looked at for the build-out was building a... Uh, a ladder into the wall, um, but it ended up being way cheaper to get one of these, what are these called, little giants, I think. Yeah, little giant ladders, and I just leave that there, and whenever I need to, you know, get up there, it's as simple as, you know, yeah, yeah. climbing up there, getting what I need, and then it just goes away. The transformer. Yeah, right, exactly. So, it, again, like, with 990 square feet, you want to, uh, use as much of the space as possible for training, uh, because also that's gonna be money. How many people can you train at a time if you're doing group training? Um, but so far, like this place has almost been, really, it's been comfortable with nine people. We've even done groups of 12 at a time yeah. uh, when it's, we've had like trials for athletes and stuff, so. Kev, I see, I see the fans around. Yes. Um, and sometimes in these spaces, <laughs> the, the landlords, you know, they're more industrial, so they don't, they're not right. caring as much about right. heat and air conditioning. How right. is it in here? Uh, it's actually quite pleasant because we're so close to the ocean. So far, we've had a really good sea breeze. We've had some days of, uh, in here, it's the hottest it's ever gotten in here has been like 84. Okay. Uh, but basically, we have a gigantic uh, industrial strength fan. That's a 30-inch oscillating fan. So that blows a ton of air around. And we also uh, put in 
two 20 inch fans that are mounted onto the office. Plus I have another 24 inch barrel fan on the ground. So when all four of those are going, it is, uh, you know, there's a lot of airflow in here. And even with the humidity, if you're working out, if you're sweating, if you just have the airflow on you, it cools you down quite a bit. So luckily we haven't had any complaints of, you know, people getting too hot. And uh, the space is so well insulated Overnight, it actually holds a lot of the coolness oh, in. Okay. So when we do our morning groups, we usually actually keep the door closed unless it's cooler outside, um, but it works out great. And then we have a, a heater that's mounted to the, the top of the, on the side of the wall, uh, which has been great. It's been nicknamed Gronk because of how loud it gets. <laughs> and it kind of sounds like the uh, foghorn that goes off when they score a touchdown at Gillette. Um, but you know, it keeps the place warm in the winters and so far like it's been uh, quite nice in the summer. Uh, I will say we've had, had some folks that said, oh, well, do you have air conditioning? And we don't. Uh, and I kind of look at it this way. Someone had a great post the other day and I apologize, I forgot who it was, but you know, when you go to work out, like, you know, you're not gonna be 65 degrees. Like it's, yeah. uh, you're going out to work out to sweat. I always keep plenty of bottles of water here. People need it. We also have a water fountain. I always say like, if you need to take a second, go stand in front of the fan. Like we have plenty of, of ventilation for all that stuff. Um, and especially for our athletes, um, we always make sure we talk about hydration. It's the first thing we talk about literally when someone steps through the door, we make sure if people don't bring a bottle of water with them, I will give them a bottle. Um, you know, we're always ready for any of those uh, situations, uh, but also, you know, when an athlete gets out in the field, if they're a soccer player, if they're playing lacrosse, guess what? Like they're playing in summer league games right now and it's 90 degrees outside, you know, training in that environment probably isn't gonna hurt them. It might actually help them prepare for their events. Yeah, speaking outside, do you ever use outside? So right now, uh, we don't use outside. I do have the option, basically the, the space right in front of my gym as the train goes by, I get a little piece of that atmosphere too. Um, but we do have a parking space that's technically right in front of the, the garage door. So I do have the option to put turf out there if I want to do some stuff in the, the summer. But I really, so far, we really haven't had the need uh, space-wise to, yeah. to go out there. So we kind of just stay in here. And if people want to you know, go outside and just kind of look at the sun for a second or get some fresh air, they can always do that. But um, you know, so far, we've just stayed inside these four walls. Cool. All right, well, let's sit down. We'll talk a little bit of a uh, little business. Awesome. All right, Kev, thank you very much yeah. for the tour. Loving what, you, what you've done here. And that's what I, I you know, when, when I talk about going to places and I want to go to different size places yeah. to show everybody, you don't need 22,000 square right. feet like Mike Boyle right. um, or <laughs> like the place I was just at up yeah. in Kenny Bunk. I mean, yeah. you can help change lives in, in a small amount of space. And also, you got to kind of know you've done a great job here organizing this right. place. Right. You're going to have a thousand square feet, mm -hmm. you better be organizing like you did. Exactly. So a little gift for you from oh, awesome. Marigold Bars. Oh, uh, awesome, thank you. Non-GMO. Uh, Fantastic. Free, lots of great stuff, low sugar, and uh, they- Smells good. Great. So yeah, man. Good deal. Marigold, uh, they've awesome. allowed us to kind of come here and uh, and, and bring more Shrinkwood TVs to people. Fantastic. And, uh, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. The crew. So let's talk about, um, you know, the marketing aspect right yeah now, uh, for you we're in a space that you have you you are not driving by right. uh, and finding this space um so how did you coming from you know you were at mike well strength and conditioning yep. yeah. and you decided to open up last year yeah. and you did how did you get the word out about this place like what did you do to get people in here yeah so i mean i think that's probably the biggest challenge for a new gym especially one that is uh at the end of an industrial you know sh street uh but the i think a lot of people will say the same thing social media advertising is incredibly effective okay. because you know what you can do especially in the area that i'm in like anthony's been driving around you see like it's not incredibly dense uh, but what i can do is i can target my advertising to a certain mile radius so i only target about seven or eight miles outside of the location of the gym okay and that's really inexpensive Okay. Like I don't spend a lot of money on, on advertising, but even probably every day, every two days, I will still get someone who wants to come into the gym and, really? and, and try it out. Wow, um, that's excellent. Yeah, and it's like, 
again, I try to keep it pretty simple because also at the end of the day, I don't like lots of uh, like gym marketing, like flashy stuff. Like yeah. I kind of like to let the program speak for itself. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the messaging behind my marketing is basically like, you know, we're here to help you get to wherever you want to go. Um, you know, you might have tried other gyms in the past, but all I want you to do is kind of come down to Allied Strength, try out a class, come down and say hi, let's chat about where, you, like, what your goals are, and then uh, let's see if I can if I can help you. Yeah. Um, because again, there's other gyms in the area, but there's nothing like what I have here, especially for athletes. Yeah. Um, So I kind of have that market cornered, but it is still the process of getting people in the door to then, I mean, this is the other thing that I found the most effective with marketing too, is like, I shouldn't be the marketing. Like I shouldn't be the one in front of the camera. I should be showing people the successes of the people that are in the gym, not just like, Hey, you guys, you should come down and try our adult group training. It's like, no, this is what our adult group training looks like. This is what the people in our adult groups look yes, like absolutely because the initial feedback that i got from uh my the, when i started advertising the gym as i and it's still on some of like the postcards that i have in like the office is like this is industry leading uh like industry leading programming or strengthening conditioning or something like that and someone said like well maybe i'm not ready to go train there like maybe i almost need to be in good enough shape to even walk through their door okay, good point and i'm like you're a hundred percent right. It is way too intimidating. And what I want, basically wanted to do is say like, this is different than maybe what you've seen in the area because like I have experience coaching. We have a programming system and it's not just me writing some stuff down when you walk through the door. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the marketing is a lot more friendly. It more shows the emotion of the people training here. And also it shows the people that are training here because I kind of want to attract the the folks that feel like they don't belong at other gyms. Like yep. those are the people that I want here. And it's kind of, uh, can I swear? It's like, oh, yes. well, I'll just say like, <laughs> uh, like we kind of have like a no a-hole policy. Yep. And what's been so cool is every single person that's joined here so far, they've been great people. Yeah. And like, I don't know if that's something that has come across in the tone of the advertisements, like great people are just attracted to the messaging of that stuff. But it, it is why, like, I swear, I said it last night, when people leave, I say, you guys, thank you so much for coming in tonight, because, like, this, it's literally the best part about my day, and one of the best things about opening up this gym is it helped me remember why I got into this industry in the yeah. first place. Yeah, Because, like, as you know, like, I was doing lots of customer service, I was standing behind a booth a lot, I was yeah. going out and coaching other coaches, yeah. but what I was missing out on was coaching general population, coaching athletes that looked like I kind of saw myself in those athletes that were just on the edge of making a team. Yeah, yeah. And the impact that you can have on not just them, but the impact that you can have on those adults that feel like nothing ever worked. Excellent. It is yeah. like, it is honestly like, it's am- I swear it's like amazing we get paid to do this because I'm, I'm wearing shorts, a t-shirt, and we get to do this every single day. And I just like, it is one of those things where if anyone ever walks through the gym door and they feel like they're going to a job, it's when they should start thinking about doing something else. Yeah, it's you true. Know? And I told the guys I spoke yesterday at, my, at Mike Boyle's yeah. conditioning, and one of the things that I said was, if you're not, if it's hard for you to wake up to come here, yeah. you're in the wrong business. One hundred percent. Obviously, you have that passion. Yeah. And now that, that's you know part of the reason why I was asking about the marketing is because you were. 45 minutes away. Yeah, yeah. You didn't, you weren't at Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning in Gloucester, right? right? Exactly, it wasn't yeah. there, yeah. and then you moved over here, and right. you ha- you know, you have some of your clients. This yeah. is kind of like really so Started fresh. from zero. Yeah, yeah I literally, I, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I, I, I've been pretty honest about this stuff, but like that was the scary thing is we talked about perform better, like delivered all this stuff, and then I looked at this, and I'm like, all right, here's $30,000. Yeah. Uh, I'm now, right now, the scoreboard is negative 30,000. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I have to go make some money now. Uh, yeah. And then the first couple of weeks, like one person trained here. Yeah. Like I'd come in, I'd train one person and I close the doors. But yeah. like that is incredibly scary. And it's also in a sense, it was, it was kind of uh, demoralizing, but then it became two people. Then it became three people. Now it's 25 people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, the, the greatest thing about everything that has happened here so far is the only person that has left this gym is because they moved away. Okay. 
Excellent. And that retention has yeah. been 100%. Yeah. Uh, and even with like the athlete stuff, like the summer's not as strong as I wanted it to be, but like even with these athletes, like, I'm like, all right, well, you guys are gonna show up and you're gonna blow everyone away. Some of them are going off to college. And my goal this summer is like, I don't care how much my sports performance program makes this summer. My kind of goal is that every single person that trains here, they show up for spring season, uh, their spring training, or excuse me, their preseason, and they just blow away their coach. Yep. All the other kids look and be like, man, I had the opportunity to go train there and, and, and I didn't, like we had some athletes, like I offered the whole local soccer team, come train here for free for wow. a month. Okay. I said, let's just get the ball rolling. Yeah. I need to shoot some video for promotion material and I want to show you guys that the program's legit. Two showed up. Wow. And though, then, but then two became four and those athletes have continued to grow the program yeah. and they're in a lot of the social media stuff. They're the ones that are doing bodyweight chin-ups and like, at the end of the day, I can't feel bad about the kids that aren't showing up because you know, we, we both know Dan John very well. Like again, I, I love that piece of advice and he mentions it as the most important piece of advice if you wanna be successful, you have to show up. All those kids had the opportunity to show up. Yep. Yeah. They didn't. Yep. And we live in an area where their parents are driving BMWs and Mercedes. Yeah. It's not a price thing. It's, yeah. it's very much like, all right, what are your priorities? You know, what are your goals? Do your behaviors match your goals and all that stuff? So yeah. um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's like, again, like it's, it's, it's just, you know how it is with the gym, sure. right? Like it's sure. not the first year, you're not gonna make a ton of money, but yeah. like three months in, we're making money. Yeah, but you have the passion to kind of put that time in. And that's right. one of the things like we talked about, you know, we're in an area yeah. and I asked you, I said, are you open on the weekend? Yeah. And what's your response? I'm open anytime people want to train here. Yeah. If, if I'm in town and I don't have something else planned, yeah. if someone wants to come in and do personal training at 1 p.m. on a Sunday, like, oh, awesome. I can't wait. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, and, it's, and it's one of those things, I don't know if part of it is like ownership. It's like having uh, more of an investment in the, the gym or whatever it is. But yeah. uh, I'm telling you, like the best part of my day, even with all the other stuff I still do with like other revenue sources, like you and I both have like a, a bunch of things we do, yeah, right? Yeah. Because like, that's how it is these days. Uh, but the best part of my day is when I walk through that door and people come behind me and they want to train here and get better. Like, I don't think there's a better feeling in the world than when someone wants to come to your business to pay you to help them get better. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a great message. Uh, so talk to me about maybe, um, one of the other bigger challenges that you've had kind of opening up, like yeah. we talked about, you know, hey, you're in a town where you, you weren't training and right. now you're starting from zero. Right. What, what other challenges have you had? Um, I, I, I think a lot of them have been personal. It has been just like making sure that you remember what your goals are as, as a business and having an understanding like, you know, I'll tell people like, yeah, the gym's not doing great. Like when I was three months in and I only had like maybe six people training, like literally six people yeah. training here, yeah. but like literally the seventh person made the gym profitable. Okay. But still at the same time, um, it's kind of like one of those things where you start thinking, did I make the right decision? Like is uh, maybe the area isn't in need of a place like this as I thought it was. Um, but I think it was just kind of a reminder that yeah, some gyms don't make money in the first year. And like, even though the gym was doing better than that, I had such high expectations yeah. uh, that I wasn't hitting. Um, but it was one of those things where like, all right, well, let's just see if we can add one more person next week. Yeah. If we, or if we, let's get one more person to walk through the door next week. Yeah. And, you know, again, if, if the gym is as good as it is, uh, then we will continue to add on to what we have. Uh, so that was probably, that was probably the biggest challenge that I face. And also, I think I probably bought too much equipment when I opened the doors. Okay, um, there you go. There, you know, in front of us right here used to be a dumbbell rack with uh, 55 to 100 pound dumbbells. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a selfish uh, purchase on my part because like, yeah, I want to bench heavy dumbbells, but um, mm -hmm. you know, that was one of the things that I got rid of to, to save space, you know, it went to a, a good home, but like, mm -hmm. luckily I've had, uh, great relationship with with Mike Boyle still like after leaving like I'm still business partners with him He's just you know one of the maybe the biggest influence I've ever had 
on my career is, yeah, is Mike yeah. Boyle. And I've been in like the plow boxes in this gym are from MBSC. The hurdles behind us on the wall, those are from MBSC. <laughs> the power blocks there, Mike sold them to me at a very, very reasonable yeah, rate. Yeah. Um, and that's like what's also kind of cool is I feel like there's still some MBSC DNA, yeah. like literally in the equipment at this at this gym. Um, but yeah, like I, I think I was very. Uh, I, I wanted to buy everything, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we you talked talk, about that. Yeah. Like the difference between wanting equipment yeah, and needing equipment. Exactly. Right? And you, sometimes when you're in it alone, right. you don't have somebody else to say, no, 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 no right. don't need that. Uh, you and know. you just so you yeah. email like Griff at Perform Better and be like, all right, well, what's it going to cost to add this to it? And it's like, yeah. well, relatively, that's not much more. And you're going to be delivering all this stuff anyways. Yeah, so let's, yeah. <laughs> let's do it. But like, you know, literally, as soon as I got rid of that dumbbell rack, it, it, it opened up the gym. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, since we're kind of talking about personal stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I, yesterday I was telling people uh, in the lecture about um, when I wanted to write a book yeah. on success in the fitness yep. industry and I came up with this idea to interview 50 people yeah. and to transcribe them and I said, what happens? The resistance comes in, right? right. Stephen yeah. Pressfield calls yeah. that the resistance. Yep. Yep. And sometimes it's not only in your head, it's from other people. So with you, yeah. Here's here's Kevin Larrabee, yeah. uh, part of CFSC, right. part of Body by Boyle Online, at Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning. Right, right, some right. people are going to say, Kev, what are you doing? <laughs> I know some people yeah. did say that to you. And yeah, you probably said it to yourself, like, wait, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, so talk to us about how you kind of overcame the resistance. Um, I, I, I think, you know, part of it was... Uh, I mean, part of it was just timing, I guess, in a, in a big sense where, like, I had been at MBSC for eight years. Yeah. Um, like, like, literally, uh, Mike was so great because he kept, like, giving me opportunities. He kept giving me projects, something yeah. new to work on, like a new challenge. And, um, you know, after eight years, and if you, if you know the staff at MBSC, like, eight years at MBSC is a is a, a lifetime yeah it is, um, it is. because uh, what a lot of coaches will use that as is almost like i like to relate it to like a graduate program yeah they'll use it as like a couple years to get a lot of hours under their belt and to get a great reference and then go to a collegiate go to a pro job open up their own place whatever yeah. it might be which is awesome it's such a great place for education because like literally you were there yesterday people yeah. get free education yeah all the time they yeah. have they can go to the perform better summit for free and all this stuff so uh for me, I kind of looked at it like I think we were two and a half years into the CFSC, and that was kind of the big thing is, I was like, all right, I think now that we did this, we did uh, an online education platform, we did uh, gym licensing, and then we did a certification. I'm like, I think we've done a lot, I've done a lot here. It's stuff I'm super proud of. Those guys are yeah. killing it with the CFSC yeah. and all the other stuff. So um, it's like, all right, well, I think this is the right time for me to uh, – go on and do something else. And I didn't know I was opening a gym. Yeah. Um, I was just like, all right, well, I'm going to talk to those guys. Let's figure out how I step away from the CFSC stuff and um, make sure, like, it was like a six month transition. Like this didn't happen overnight. Like Christina Jennings, who we know, like she took over a lot of my responsibilities and Kevin and Brendan stepped up too. Um, and that allowed me to basically say, all right, I feel good. They got this. I can leave. And after, you know, it, you know what it was? It was I literally was riding my bike around, and I drove by this place okay. and on my bike, because this area that we're in, there aren't a lot of buildings like this. There aren't yeah. a lot of properties yeah. like this that would have a small square footage that would allow me to open up a gym. But basically, uh, you know, I think I got less resistance from the folks when I started to ask them, like, this is, is this the right idea? When I said, all right, well, this is kind of like my budget. This is how much money I have saved. Like, even if this, if, even if I like bought all this stuff, I opened the doors and I locked the door for a year, I'd be okay. Yeah. Like financially, yeah, like I'm yeah. not like putting all like my chips on the table. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. It was one of those things where, all right, well, you could do this for a year. And if it's not, you know, incredibly successful, you can go do, or if you find you hate it. Yeah, and you're yeah. you're going nuts. You can go do something else. I think that's when I got a little bit less resistance. But yeah, there were plenty of people who are like, "What do you? T you come on, man! Like, what are you doing? You get to travel all over the place." Yeah, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think that was the other thing is I hated flying. I didn't like yeah. traveling, and that was kind of uh, one of the big perks of the job was getting to go to all these places to travel. But at the end of the day, like, I kind of like 
driving five minutes to the gym. Yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> and, I walk to my, you know, Right, I, I, exactly. Right. So it's, it's one of those things where your priorities shift and you start thinking about what's important. And like, again, you know, what do you want your legacy to be? Yeah. Like uh, almost one of those things where, yeah, I was doing all this stuff with Mike for, for eight years. Like, all right, I think it's about time that I go try to do some stuff on my own. Yeah. Um, and again, like there's, uh, I, I, I can't, I will never, like I talked to him two weeks ago, like I said, when I saw him perform better, like, man, I'm just forever grateful for the opportunities that he gave yeah. me there. Um, and it's like one of those things where we both know, uh, I don't know if there's a better person in the industry. Yeah, I agree. You I know, agree. Uh, and generous with his time, yep. uh, generous with opportunities, and also, um, God, the legacy that that's gonna, that guy's gonna leave in this industry sure. is just gonna be uh, like, it's gonna be 200 years. Yeah, and, and like, the tentacles real. are here because it, I think you yeah. made the right move uh, now that I'm here and I you right, know, yeah. talk to you and, and see the passion that you have for, yeah. for, you know, you're changing all these lives right. and you're affecting all these lives. And I talked yesterday about to everyone, the, the interns about the impact that they have and make sure you understand yeah. the impact that you're having, which you obviously yeah. understand doing a great job yeah. here. So Kev, thanks for coming Thank on you and, so much. and sharing about, uh, you know, this journey and this process yeah. and uh, doing a great, some great things here, man. Thank you so much. Love it.